Hey everybody, Chris Grandy. Had a question uh, regarding um, Ancora asking, why do financial advisors always recommend insurance for college planning? So I'm gonna turn this into a double actually. When I first read it, I had answered it because I didn't see the college part. And it was thought they were asking, why do financial advisors always recommend insurance? So I'm going to just brush on both of those in this video, just so you have an idea of, of what's going on. So what I have here is I have a sample client and typical situation. These are a couple in their early 40s and they have a seven-year-old kid. They have 600,000 in investments. They have a, a property and they have a loan. Furthermore, their income is about 200,000 combined. So they're, they're, you know, they're doing okay for themselves. Financial advisor comes and visits them. Why would they need insurance? So let's, let's address that first. Well, let's first, let's look at, um, I'm using my financial planning software here. So let's look at the insurance tab, and get an idea. Let's look at the different types of insurances. First, you have life insurance, okay? If you die, let's just say you're one of the, you're with a client here. You have your spouse as the co-client. If you die and you're earning $100,000, which I assume in this thing, what replaces your income when you're gone? You know, you might have that group policy at work, like right here. You have to save $200,000 of group policy, group policy at work. What's going to replace your income? Crickets, right? Don't hear anything. That's why you have life insurance. Because really, you're talking about, imagine trying to run the whole household with your income completely gone. It just doesn't make any sense. And if you've got that mortgage, 200000 that'll help for a little while, but it's not going to, you know, unless your spouse remarries or something, it's really not going to fill the gap. Um, in this case, bare minimum, you know, paying off the house would be at least a starter a starter level for, for life insurance. So there's that. Let's take disability insurance. Now, both of these, both both members of this couple, I'm, I'm assuming, have some disability coverage. And a lot of times, yeah, they, some coverage is decent, sometimes it isn't. But in this case, you got $3,000 of, of coverage on an income of $8,000. The key point here, remember, is that that's $3,000 after tax. A lot of people do not click the button or, or inform their HR department that they should get their disability benefits after tax. So what happens is if they do get disabled and they collect benefits, they're taxable. Furthermore, those benefits are usually less than the salary, so you have a lower number and they're taxable, which brings it even lower. So in this case, having the right amount of disability coverage, I mean, imagine if you're bringing in 100,000 a year and then we have to replace that with 36,000. You know, let's say you're 100,000 a year is 80,000 after tax. We got to replace that with 30 grand. Where's the other 50 grand gonna come from? And if you're disabled, you're, a, you're a, a lump on the couch, you're probably costing the family money. So not only are they 30 grand low on income, but there's additional expenses to take care of you. What do you do in those situations? You know, that's, this is why you got to consider disability coverage to supplement your plan at work. Also, if you leave work, go independent, start your own business, super important to have disability insurance and get it while you're healthy so that if you do change roles and your health changes, you know, you can still be pretty healthy, but be in a position where you don't qualify for life or disability insurance. So it's always good to try to nab those earlier in life when you're, when you're healthy. And then if you just keep the coverage, the company's stuck with you. They can't get rid of you after that. So, you know, that's the reason there. So realize here that, you know, life would be very different if, if the, in this situation, the family income dropped 50000 And then all of a sudden, you know, some, something's also got to get some extra money for the, you know, for, for you on the couch. All right. So those are the big ones. The other one I want to cover is like property and casualty. I'm amazed here in California how few people have earthquake insurance. I mean, literally, you... you you think of California, you think of earthquakes, right? They don't happen all the time. Well, they kind of do. There's always these small quakes, but these like disastrous quakes are really not that common. But, you know, the chance is there. And you would think that, you know, in a state like that, if you live near the ocean, you'd want to have 
flood insurance if you uh, lived next to an active volcano, which no one would insure you anyway. You might want to have some fire insurance. But people out here do not have earthquake insurance because it's so expensive. I guess their plan is just to give the keys back to the bank. But realize here that, you know, if you don't have the right kind of property coverage, let's say, let's look at your auto insurance and liability. Let's say you're driving in a car and you're driving your $50,000 Tesla and you crash into a $150,000 Mercedes and the person get injured. And let's say you also ricochet into somebody's house. So you caused about 300,000 of damage. A lot of policies have $100,000 or $200,000 of damage coverage. If you need to pay three hundred dollars and your coverage is only one hundred, dollars where do you think the other two hundred dollars is coming from? It's coming from your checkbook. So, you know, as I'm looking at this, realize that, you know, these are situations. Why do you need to have insurance? Why do, why do advisors recommend it? Yes, I'm going to come out and say that, yes, especially with the college planning stuff, which I'm going to get to in a second. It, Insurance can be very lucrative for that advisor to sell to you, and that's certainly a motivation. But realize, too, that having insurance is proper financial planning, and it is not a bad thing. I mean, when you start, your basic base of your financial planning should be estate planning and insurance and having that all squared away, and then you go look at longer-term goals and savings, etc. But insurance is a super important base-level part of financial planning. Now let me address the college planning stuff. The reason why a lot of financial, these you know, college planning specialists uh, recommend insurance is because uh, life insurance assets and uh, retirement assets are not counted on financial aid calculations. So what they try to do with a lot of people is that you know a few you know but you know before age fifteen for the kids you know because a lot of times I think financial aid applications look back two years. So fifteen year olds etc. When your child's fifteen or earlier. They'll advise, hey, you know what? You get any extra? Okay, you got two hundred grand to sit in the bank. Let's throw that into a life insurance policy. Let's put that into an annuity or something. Let's make it retirement funds. Let's make it insurance funds. That way, when it comes time to apply for um, financial aid, then you know that's not going to show up. Now, I'm not going to tell you. I don't know your situation, but I'm not going to tell you that you know that doing this kind of planning is good or bad for you because I don't know your situation. However, I will say that. I would advise you to consider working with a solid team of advisors, which consists with, with one member of that team being a financial aid expert, not a financial aid expert who sells insurance, but just a financial aid expert. Uh, you know, we have someone in our team that, that I tap into the, that, sh, you know, she works at a major Boston university, not Boston university, a major Boston area college. And, and she knows financial aid. And then she works on a fee basis with us, you know, for our clients. So when if she advises a certain thing, it's not because she's getting an insurance commission. So I would advise considering working with a team like that, where the planner and the tax professional, legal professional, insurance professional, and a financial aid expert are all working together to make your plan good. You know, at least that way you know that you've got you you're getting kind of and if they work on a fee basis in some capacity, you know that it's you know not just motivating you to throw all your money in insurance. So. Insurance can be a good thing for financial aid planning for some people. It really is customized and, and without knowing an individual situation, I can't say, yeah, or nay, good idea, a bad idea. But I can say that if you work with the right kind of people, and then furthermore, you know, maybe commissioned insurance is the appropriate thing. You know, buying an insurance policy where the agent gets a commission or buying an annuity where the agent gets a commission. But there are also no commission uh, programs available. So if you want to work on a fee base with an advisor, you know, you could always pay a fee. You know, maybe pay an advisor X fee to research insurance policies for you and help you get into the right one. So if it does make sense, that would be a way to consider going. But bottom line here is, is that, you know, look, work with an independent team with experts that are specialized in their fields that work together for you that I feel that would give you a, a really solid opportunity to make the right decision from that standpoint. So bottom line is, yes, they, you know, a lot of times insurance is recommended because it's lucrative, but the same time uh, it, it can be a smart planning move for lots of reasons so if it is going to be a smart planning move for you just try to work you know work with the right kind of people to make that happen all right i'm out with that there's my video quora answer hope this was helpful to you any questions drop them down below any um, um if you have any further questions you go to my website planwithchris.com if you like the video please click like if you want to see more of this stuff and, and get post on it hit subscribe 
and get notified. You know, I do videos like Quora Answers. I do financial planning videos. I also have my entrepreneur um, interview series, which I've been building out where I interview small, successful entrepreneurs because a lot of my uh, people I work with have this idea of getting rid of corporate and starting their own thing. I just run into so many people that have, have their dreams. And so I just, I started part of my uh, videos or some of my videos are on successful entrepreneurs to give, uh, you know, the people that are, are in my life some, some added inspiration to make their thing happen. So love to have you as a subscriber, like the video, make comments, etc. And appreciate your time. Have a great day. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching.